Welcome to the new 180. We are delighted that you're engaging in this process and are beginning to plan for its use. Let's hear first from your regional director. Hello, I am Amat al Alim Al Suswa, director of the UNDP Regional Bureau for Arab States, Assistant Secretary General and Chair of the Regional Directors Team for the Arab States. It is on behalf of the Regional Directors Team that I have the pleasure to introduce and launch in the Arab region the newly updated 180 competency development tool for resident coordinators and UN country teams. In my short time with you now, I'll be providing an overview of what the 180 tool is and what it means for us all from a global and regional perspective. The reminder of the training video will then be led by Mr. Kiran Biri of Kofi International the consultancy firm which supported the design of the 180 tool, who will explain in detail the various components of the tool. The 180 tool is a key part of the continuing UN reform process. It has been developed by the UNDG Working Group for Resident Coordinator System Issues, and it has been agreed by all UN agencies that all UN country team members will participate. The 180 tool is designed to strengthen the mutual accountability of the UN system in delivering shared results through, for example, the UNDEF, in line with national priorities and plans, global commitments such as the MDGs and treaty bodies. Our regional directors team and the whole UNDG recognizes the significant role that the UN country team and resident coordinator play in delivering these results. As such, we are committed to the ongoing development of your performance as individuals and as a team. The 180 tool is an important component of the overall performance monitoring, evaluation and development of resident coordinators and UN country teams and is an important resource used in the annual regional director's team appraisal of your work. Essentially, the 180 tool assesses and helps develop competencies of one, the resident coordinator, two, UN country team members individually, and three, the UNCT collectively. In the design of the 180 tool, which has included RCs, UNCT members, UNDG members, and our own RDT secretariat, we have tried to make it the most user-friendly system possible. However, it is true success depends on your time and your commitment to the 180 process, how you reflect on your team's development needs, and how you resolve to continuously improve. The 180 tool process is one in which we are very committed. It is a critical part of the strengthening of the mutual accountability and the continuous improvement of our work. It is a process in which we are confident you will personally benefit. I, on behalf of the regional director's teams, thank you for your dedication and participation and for continuing to make the UN more efficient and more effective where it matters most at the country level. Thank you very much. Research teaches us that high-performing organizations, teams and individuals take feedback seriously. They use it to review what they're doing well so they can maintain those things and keep doing them right. They also use it to understand what they're doing not so well so they can plan to develop in the future. I welcome your use of 180 for that same reason. This will allow you an opportunity, both as individuals and as country teams, to review what's doing well and congratulate yourselves for that, and also to review the areas of both individual and team performance you need to take a look at and develop. So why is 180 valuable? It provides for us an opportunity to learn how different people experience our behaviour and our work performance. It encourages our self-development. It takes an organisational view about performance and organisational effectiveness so we can plan across the organisation what we need to change and develop. 
It promotes an open feedback culture. And that in itself increases communication. And it can be a powerful trigger for change. Feedback has been described as the breakfast for champions, simply because champions and high-performing leaders are known to seek, value, and most importantly, to use feedback. You have the opportunity to do the same, to give feedback to your colleagues, and to take the responsibility to give them feedback in a way that will allow them to understand what they can do differently and also to praise them for what they do well. Similarly, you have responsibility to receive feedback and to be seen to do something with it. So, let's discuss best practice so we can get the best out of 180. Firstly, we need to welcome 180 and encourage others to welcome it also. We should sit down together and discuss our expectations of the process and also discuss any concerns we have. We should establish a set of ground rules so we understand when the process will begin, when it will end, and most importantly we need to discuss confidentiality so we're all clear of the rules of confidentiality of giving and receiving feedback. We also should discuss how we're going to use the, the reports that we receive. We need to plan some time to sit down and discuss particularly the team report when we finish the process and to discuss how we're going to develop as a team. This is the second generation 180, which has been designed with assistance from many of you and which takes into consideration all the feedback that was gathered at the end of the last 180 process. You will find the new 180 easy to navigate and you will find a lot of the data already pre-populated. There are, however, some significant changes which I need to address with you. Firstly, there are now three assessments. The resident coordinator assessment, the country team member assessment, and the new country team assessment. The resident coordinator and the country team member assessment are based on competencies. These are leadership, analytical decision-making and problem-solving, accountability, planning and performance, interpersonal communication, and finally, maximizing country impact. The team profile is different. The team profile explores the five characteristics of high-performing teams. They are having clear, common, and shared goals, having a positive team culture, having transparent group dynamics, having ambition, and finally, acknowledging others and their skills. You will find that each of the competencies and the attributes in the team study are broken down into key behavioural indicators. This will make it easy for you to, to give good, clear and concise feedback to your colleagues. You'll also be given the opportunity to write any comments you have at the end of each sequence. We would encourage you to do so. You'll be asked to give feedback to each of your country team members and your resident coordinator. And each member will also be asked to give you feedback. You will do the team study only once.